When you become a parent, everything changes. You understand things that you didn't understand before, and the fundamental way that you view the world completely shifts. When you become a parent, you realize what it's like to love somebody else more than you love yourself. So, when you're a college student or when you're a high school student, you're hiking up the canyon with a bunch of friends, you see some rocks you want to roll, you climb up the, the little cliff and you roll rocks down the hill and it's fun. When it's a hot day and you see a river, you don't think twice about jumping in and taking a swim. Um, if you're like me, then sometimes in the dead of winter you might walk to campus with flip-flops on because it's convenient. When you're a parent, that changes. You don't allow your child to go up and climb on the cliff and roll the rocks down because he could fall. You don't allow him to jump into a river without a life jacket on because he might drown. You don't allow him to walk to school with flip-flops on because it's not healthy and it's not wise. Thinking like a mom is seeing the world and seeing the students through this lens. So, when you think like a mom, you see the students as young men whom you love and you want them to have a healthier and better and more safe life than you had. That's what being a parent is all about. So if you look at the skill statements below, the first one says, I demonstrate an ability to see the students through the eyes of a conservative, concerned parent. This one is difficult to measure, but you know it when you see it. Your second skill statement is, I demonstrate common sense in what I allow students to do. In one program I worked at, uh, there was a staff member who was taking the students for a short drive. He was going out to, to get something and took some students along. And because he didn't have enough seats in his car for the students he had with him, he allowed a couple students to sit on the trunk on the back of the car, and he drove it that way. His rationalization was, well, I was driving slow, and um, I was just taking back streets. Still, is that something a parent would do? No. Um, when you are asking the students to come and get their medications, you don't shout down the hall, all right, guys, come get your crazy pills. That's not something a sensitive parent would do. When you're sitting in the common area and you see a student jump over onto the couch and walk across the cushions to get where he's going, would your mother let that fly? No. You don't do that. You tell them, stop, keep your feet off the couch. You act like a parent. The third skill statement is being safety-minded. This is where you see everything through the lens of safety. If you're walking through the building, you see a rope laying on the ground, you don't walk by. In your mind, you think a kid could use that to hurt himself. You pick it up, you take it to the mentor's office, and you lock it up. So see the world through a safety-conscious lens. Your fourth skill statement is, my choice in what I do and say with the students would always meet with the approval of their parents or of your parents. So imagine that their parents are silently and invisibly present, listening to everything you say to the students. If it wouldn't meet with their approval, don't say it. Don't do it. Always do things that their parents would approve of or that your parents would approve of. This means no mean-spirited comments, no belittling, no scaring or intimidating the students. Always treat them with love and tenderness and kindness. The fifth skill statement is, I interact with students' families in a way that fosters warmth, connection, and trust. For a moment, just imagine that your child, your son or your daughter, left home. They had to go out to New York on a trip. While they were out there, they were in some kind of accident. They had to be hospitalized. For some reason, you can't be there with them, and you have to completely rely on the hands of strangers the doctors and nurses at this facility. So you sit nervously by your phone, waiting for them to call. What would you hope they would do? How would you hope they would treat your child? Put yourself in their shoes and consider what they're going through and always do the things that they would want you to do. Keep in mind that sometimes an absence of communication is the worst form of communication. If you were sitting there waiting for an update and you had to wait too long, think about how that would feel if it were your, it were your child. So be a good communicator.
and always treat parents with courtesy and respect. When you see them in the building, make them feel welcome. This is just as much their home as it is their son's home. Remember at Telos, we treat whole families, not just boys.